when we talk about all of these issues, the technical stuff, the mechanical stuff, underneath all of that is the issue of respect. Because if people do not respect you, uh, people will disrespect you and act as though you do not matter. And so when we talk about respect, we're talking about respect from the perspective of safety. All lives should be safe. And we are here and making this argument uh, on the basis of safety. And uh, the plans that have been proposed uh, once the demolishment takes place uh, does not bring safety to children and the most vulnerable uh, members of our community. Brother. The McBride Viaduct has a special connection to St. Anne's Church, St. Anne's School, the Lower East Side of Erie and Buffalo Road area. And not only is it a historical landmark, but it's also a monument to the blood, sweat, and tears of generations of people. This bridge has become a nationwide news story. Everyone is focused on Erie, Pennsylvania. Hard to believe the future of this city is tied up in what happens to that bridge. As coordinator of the East Avenue, Hess Avenue neighborhood watch and a priest in residence at St. Anne's Church, I can attest to the fact the majority of neighborhoods supports the saving of the McBride Viaduct and its revitalization. A lot of arguments have been proposed by government officials and government agencies. They have no merit at all. Let's call it for what it is, fake news. The McBride Viaduct, argument number one. Argument one, the McBride Viaduct is too old. It's an 80-year-old bridge built in 1938. False. There have been two McBride Viaducts. The first was built 1937 and 1938. The second was built 1971 to 1972. The one that is standing there now is 46 years old, from 71 to 72. Mayor Lou Tulio had it built. I've been on that CAC with the uh, McBride Viaduct for approximately eight years now. I've been, uh, we haven't had the meetings for a while, but quite frankly, I've been involved in it. I have a number of uh, people calling me still. Where are we? Well, we haven't done anything. I was by it today. Over. We haven't even cleaned the drains out on that thing. We're watching the water come down, dripping off of the edges. And, and it's mostly superficial. And the mayor, the only thing I basically wanted to say to you is that you had mentioned when you were running you know, that you were going to you know, work with the people, come in the neighborhoods, and that. that's basically what we're asking. What, what needs changed is something in the engineering department. The information that we've been getting has been really crazy. Uh, I've talked with workers with the city, a number of them I grew up with and, at, and worked with. They told me they were never instructed to clean the gutters out in the bridge, to do anything with the bridge, which is sad. The money, there's money there over a million dollars that could be for revamping the bridge for at least foot traffic. Like I said, if you didn't do a thing with that bridge right now, we haven't done anything for years. Another 50 to 100 years, that bridge would still be standing for foot traffic. But in the meantime, the safety of children, when you walk the Bayfront, and I've walked it, you're over 700 feet further that these children have to walk. And when you get to 12th and Bayfront, that is a treacherous road there. I don't even like to drive it. Traffic by foot, you're never going to wear that bridge out right now. First you go over the McBride Viaduct, which was neglected by the city, a city asset that was neglected for at least 10 years. So I guess my question is, what's changed since the mid-30s, when those children from St. Anne's Parish got killed, they got hit by a train, and Monsignor McBride took it upon himself to fight for that viaduct. What's changed? It does not mention safety of the crossing at 12th and the Bayfront Connector. It does not expo it talk about the exposure to air pollution or noise pollution or snow or anything like that. However, those were factors. It's really curious that now, this late in the project, the the consultant said, oh, guess what, PennDOT 2, how about we put up a wall? Since all of you in October of 2017 complained about the same snow that people talked about in 2012, 
why don't we put up a wall? For four and a half years, we have constantly worked on laying out the path for the mayor's office to be the hero here. It started out not as the hero. It started out as a very dismissive and disinvestment attitude towards the east side, and it's been perpetuated that way all along. Uh, nothing but misinformation and misquotes have been spewered for the last four and a half years out of the fifth floor on this issue. We give you all the material you need to change your mind and turn around, and we're just asking for a public hearing. You can be a hero with no political risk by having a public hearing. Any of you can call for it. I will give you an example. We, we can shred every reason that they use that they need to demolish this bridge. We can shred every one of them. I will shred one tonight, a big one that keeps popping up, ADA compliance. ADA upgrades are required for new construction and alterations only, not for maintenance. Our plan is not altering the bridge. It's fixing in place. It's maintenance. But my question is, did they do a report similar to this? Because it would have had to be a separate report on is it unsafe, structurally unsafe for people and for bicycles. So if they did not do that report, I think all of this, these decisions have been based on nothing. What's most disconcerting to me is the process. Um, the word transparency has been bounced around here like a soccer ball. But, you know, and, and the way I see it, I mean, you can sit up there and beat your chest about transparency all you want. But when you vote to approve a contract to destroy a viaduct and then maneuver the idea of a public hearing off of the agenda, that, that doesn't smell like transparency to me. It smells, but it doesn't smell like transparency. In regards to the viaduct, um, words have meanings. They carry different rates. So we have this section here called um, Citizens to be Heard, and Erie CPR is asking for a public hearing. The difference between listening to someone, someone just hearing the words coming out of your mouth and just processing it, and then being heard, someone taking in the words you're saying and acting accordingly to it is what Area CPR is asking you guys to do. Um, this is a response to them not feeling heard. They want to be at the table of decision making. They feel very much like there isn't a conversation happening. They're coming here, you're listening to them, but they're not actually being heard. I mean, 25 years ago, we've just carved a big concrete gash right through our neighborhood when we put the Bayfront Highway in. So it is an emotional issue in our neighborhoods. It is a part of the social fabric of that neighborhood. It is a social justice issue in the neighborhood. But I just want to know, why can't we have both? You know, what is this sense of inevitability, like the bridge has to come down? I, I don't understand why, why we have to tear it down. Why can't we have both? And just as a resident, I don't understand. You know, I love this city. And I don't want to stand in the way of progress. I don't think anyone in here wants to stand in the way of progress for Erie. We want to see it thrive. We want to see people be included. We want people to be heard. We want to, don't want to feel like we come here and, and you're just letting us go through an exercise in futility while you just wait for us to finish. We really hope that we would be heard throughout all this. This viaduct does mean something to a lot of people. It's not just silliness. It's just not, you know, pure nostalgia and just keep it there because it's old. It really does mean something. And for that to just be tore down without acknowledging all that's happened to the east side and without acknowledging the extreme decline over there already just feels like another slap in the face. So as a resident, I just want to know clearly, if this truly needs to be torn down, I want clear reasons why, why it will not work as a pedestrian you know, walkway. Why isn't that reasonable? I have not yet heard real clear reasons. Michelle and every other citizen in Erie, we can't do that because this, this, this. But I've not heard that. It's just like, well, you know, like the train's moving too fast and we can't stop it now. That's not good enough. So, thank you. Save the bridge. Save the bridge. Save the bridge.